Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Most of you, most of you have lived quiet lives of desperation. And most of you have lived um, uh, your life by giving tacit approval. Tacit approval is as follows. This part of the room here is in a meeting with the big guy. Not necessarily me. And he says certain things and he's asked certain questions. And then, uh, but he, he didn't blaspheme or say you, you can't do that. The whole PowerPoint presentation is towards you can't do it, but he doesn't have a sign, you're not supposed to do this. So then the, you guys infiltrate in the other part of the company. And she says, you know, the old man is really not against that. And by the time it gets down to you, the, the old man's for it. Because you're afraid to stand up and grab yourself by whatever you got and say, that's wrong. And you've lived your life, and that's what the corporate world is today. You've lived your life by giving tacit approval. You didn't say so. And that's why I'm not so articulate, because there are people that are more articulate than I. But I'm emphatic about certain things, because I don't want you to be misled. I've got a whole section on the website, this seminar is not for you. But the next time you start to... Are you okay? Why are you saying that? And the next time the words come out of your mouth, I'm working on it. I hope you bite your tongue. High performance people take action and they figure it out later. This is what you look like coming to me with a baggage. Some of you have more baggage in this on your back. When Sally and I lived in India for three and a half years, we have spent 13 and a half, almost 14 years living in Asia. We've paid our dues. If there is a purgatory before you go to heaven, we've already paid it, 14 years in Asia. Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, India, China, the Philippines, a couple others. And that's not unusual. That's the baggage you have. So how do you get rid of that bag? With great fucking difficulty. Great difficulty. And I've seen loads bigger than that. In Delhi and a few other places. We live half of the time in northern India and half the time in southern India. And Jack Welch, Bill Gates, amongst others, say the smartest people on the planet are from southern India. And he's right. And if you look at the Fortune 100 companies right now, uh, I mean, 60% of them are run by Asians. We, um, and it's the, these are words. How, how can you prove you're not afraid? To, how can you prove that you're not afraid to fail? I take an action. When I came up with the uh, the words, just fucking do it. I thought I'd be sued by Nike in a month. And then I finally, about 10 years ago, met a very senior guy on the board of Nike. He says, your name comes up at every board meeting. But we would only give you recognition. But I, you know, I, it was because legendary, I don't know if that's the right word. I just fucking do it. Doesn't always work, but it most of the time works. Or I'm now experienced enough to make it work, even if it's fucked up to begin with. When I first started, I wasn't experienced enough. But then I discovered the dream team. And my first chairman was the former Secretary of Defense under Eisenhower and Nixon. And uh, he made magic. And then I had some, I had the father of the North Sea on my board. Uh, I had some smart, smart, smart guys. Never had a gal on my board originally. And I wasn't afraid to ask him. And as I say, and I've said many, many times, I didn't know you could fill the head of a pencil, that little bit of lead, with the knowledge I had about the oil and gas business. Didn't know shit. I gave a speech in front of the American Petroleum Institute many years ago. And our chief, and this is before PowerPoint, uh, we were on like these big flip chart things on an easel. And uh, Jimmy was late, Jimmy Ford was his name. 
So I said, I'm going to give the fucking talk to the American. These are all the geophysicists, petroleum engineers, geologists, etc. And um, I get about 20, 25 minutes into the presentation. At the back of the room, about this big, Jimmy, our head guy, had been he was late, a storm, our plane couldn't land, blah, blah, blah. And he's going like this. I didn't know what the fuck he meant. And so, um, and then he runs up after about 40, 45 minutes. And he runs up and he says, Danny, uh, we got to go. Uh, you know, we got rough weather. We're not going to be able to take off. And I got a standing ovation. I left. My charts were upside down. All the geophysical data was up fucking side down. We had three or 400 of the brightest oil and gas guys on the earth in that motherfucking room. And the charts were upside down. We laughed so hard in the plane, going back from there. I almost shit myself. I laughed so fucking hard. He said, Danny, the charts were upside down. So much for your research. I can show you, I'm pretty good with math, or as they say in this country, I can show you proven formula, I can show you another way. Because I'm not afraid of risking self-deprecation. I'm not afraid of making fun of myself. I have no fear of that, none. I normally talk about the stiff dick here. What's up? But anyway, we, we, we beat that one to death. Uh, now, these are two books recently published, both called Never Enough. One is a woke, milk toast, vagina cunt saying uh, we're working enough. You know, life is fucked up because we're working. You know, it's never enough. The other one is by a Navy SEAL, decorated Navy SEAL, who says it's never enough. You got to keep working forward. I'm privileged to say that I'm chairman of a company uh, with a Navy SEAL who's you, the you in the deal, the Navy, active duty Navy SEAL in John. And, uh, but that's where we've come. Now, f go back, not fast check, but go back to the late 60s. Uh, um, uh, there was a book called I'm Okay, You're Okay. In my judgment, this is the beginning of the downfall of humanity. This book was written by a um, psychiatrist named Stein. And it was about, it was, a, it, it was the precursor to woke. I'm okay, whatever you do is okay, whatever I do is okay, you can spit on my wife's face, it's okay, yada, yada, yada. That was the name of the book. I'm okay, you're okay. That was the beginning of the end. Now, we fast forward from 1969, 70, 50 plus years to now, and now we've got another generation of uh, enough, uh, never enough. Uh, they're saying on the woke book, that uh, you can never work enough, and somebody's always going to want more out of you, blah, 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 like me. And then on the other book, the SEAL book, is it's never enough. You can never do enough. To save lives, don't leave your partner behind, yada, yada, okay. We haven't come full circle because I believe it's going to get a little more wokey before it ends. But I told you at the beginning when we came back from lunch, the Russians eat this model alive. The Eastern Europeans, Romania, Lithuania, Estonia, the Czech Republic. Eat this model alive. Because they never gave a shit what anybody thought anyway. And Putin and Ukraine is a classic example. And to the extent uh, uh, Yetnahu, the uh, chairman or the prime minister, of Israel, he doesn't really give a fuck what anybody else says either. Just remember, you have to make a decision, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to succeed at this, you have to decide that you would rather be effective as opposed to being liked. You can, I mean, you can count the people that like me on the planet on two hands. Maybe. I'm not sure if we've got two hands. And they're all religious. Now this is an example of why just as the world is ready for QLA like it's never been ready before, 
in this country, Scotland, which has got a separate political system, 9% of the people of the firms believe that the current party in power understands business, SNP. 9%. And they're still in office. And that's who I'm running against as an independent. More than 9%, or less than 9% are going to believe that you know how to do these deals with no money. You may have to go through 10 chairmen, potential chairmen, before you find one. And you'll get to be a better salesman, a better salesman, a better salesman, so you can convey your message. Because for those of you that have some education, that's too bad, but your parents didn't send you to school to get an MBA or a PhD uh, to be a salesman. Salesmen are at the bottom of the rung. We said that. Now, the five or ten people that like me are people like this. The girl that is second to my right, my left, Sister Luce, is a rock star, talks to the Pope, and she's my mentee. And I talk to her just like I'm talking to you. And she goes like this. She keeps going like this all day long. All those nuns. That, that was my birthday last year. And uh, this is Holy Family. I talked about Sri Lanka, but this is the Holy Family in the Philippines. And uh, Sally and I are there. And I'm happy around those people. But I'm not happy around you. That speaks volumes. There's Sister Luz. Now, I knew the bitch had talent when I first met her 20 years ago. I'm giving a hug goodbye, and the girls that are there that we put through schools and shit like that, university. I call everything shit, so I don't mean it that way. And there she is, 25 years ago with the Pope, and there she was last year with the Pope. She has told the Pope a thousand times, Dan Pena's on a rocket ship to heaven. Dan Pena's on a rocket ship to heaven. Dan Pena's on a rocket ship to heaven. And I say, sister, you ought to add Dan Pena's on a motherfucking rocket ship to heaven. And she goes, Dan Pena's on a rocket ship to heaven. I'm going to be a saint, as I said last night, before and sooner than St. Teresa was a saint. And I believe with all my heart, I'm on a motherfucking rocket ship to heaven. And most of my money is going to the church. God bless her. And every day this mass is given to me, for me. Every fucking day. High requiem. Every fucking day. Because I'm on a rocket ship to fucking heaven. That's why. And I believe it with all my heart. And if you don't believe like this about you being successful, you're going to fucking fail. Thank you, Father George. So I have the right people pulling for me. Not my mother, God rest her soul. Or not my dad, God rest her soul. Or not some fucking relative. <sighs> Later on in the week, for those of you in the United States, this is the guilt edge panacea for you to start. SBA. God gave you this. Up to $5 million. God himself must have written this fucking thing. Because it makes it for morons like you to get started with, again, no money. And Trump says he's going to increase it to 10 or $15 million. If that happens, well, I hope it does happen. And Trump's going to do away with inheritance tax. If that happens, I can't imagine Trump and all these guys, no inheritance tax. Are, are you shitting me? Even Richie the Richie, the, the prime minister here is talking about the uh, conservatives to win the election, the labor doesn't stomp them. It's talking about doing away with inheritance tax. Do you realize how far that has come? since they invoked the first income tax in the world in 1907 in America? No fucking inheritance tax? For me, it's 50%. You don't have enough money to worry about it. 
So we're edging back a little. We're clawing back against the boat yoke. We're clawing back a little. Just like the reverse options and shit you were talk, we were talking about. We'll talk about that more. When I tell you the world is fucked up by world PP and snowflakes who melt under pressure, I know what the fuck I'm saying. Read, read, no, read real email from one of my CEOs. Um, would you please read this email? Hello, sir. I just had a peculiar situation and cannot stop wondering what the world has come to. I told you about the pusher, pusher we hired. Salesman. He, he had no real sales during the first month and did not travel to our, one of our companies due to the heavy rain today. After I wrote him that I expect him to be at the company tomorrow and that he has to show up, has to show more effort, he immediately sent his recognition letter as he thought that my message was impudent. I wonder what he would have done with you as a boss. He would have either shit himself or killed himself. Best regards. This is one of my top CEOs telling the sales manager who had done shit that he couldn't do shit, no shit, the next, and he quit. That's today. That's management today. Some of you, in fact, all of you are a product of this environment. Most of you suffer from it. Now, I will neither confirm nor deny that I used to choke people, slap them in business. But as Mr. Glatz, the former CEO of a NASA shipping, taught me many, many decades ago, Mr. Pena, where there's smoke, there's fire. If there's a rumor about some of it's true. I was a rough motherfucker. I did the first commercial advert in 1985 for UK TV for uh, investment banking, uh, etc. cetera, when the law changed. Maxwell and I did the, uh, the commercial together. They used to call me Little Max. Uh, the world, you know, it's like um, Elon Musk said when he fired everybody in India, not everybody, almost everybody, he said, why don't you go work from home and pretend to work for somebody else? The world is changing, which makes it perfect for us. The more chaos, the better we have, the more opportunity. But you've got to pull the fucking trigger. And you've got to pull the trigger until you understand the model. You understand the model as you work through it. Gabriel, who you saw before lunch, said it, not best, but he said it, well, it's a building block process. It is. But you've got to pull the trigger. Goldman Sachs, you down the gauntlet, you've got to come to the office. I don't know if it's three days a week. Our daughter works for a big company. You've got to be in the office three days a week. I tell the story in the early 90s when Lou Gessner took over IBM who was failing, going out of business. They hired him uh, from uh, American Express, I think, to come and be the new CEO. And there was a big snowstorm in upper in northeastern United States and uh, Roanoke, New, uh, New York, or someplace where the, the company headquarters was at five feet of snow, and, uh, 10 feet of snow. And the CFO sent, not an email, but sent phone messages out to all the employees in the headquarters, 14 or 1,500. He said, if you're not at work tomorrow morning at 8.15, they're supposed to report at 8.30, don't come at all. You're fired. I suggest you get a snow plow for the front of your car. Now, can you imagine if that now email went out today? Makes my dick stiff just thinking about it. 87% of the employees showed up the next day at work. Not by 8.15, some got there because 15 feet of snow. And I won't say that was the peak of anti-woke, but it was kind of the, you know, the prequel, as they say, to anti-woke. And he turned IBM around very successfully. The world didn't used to be like this. 
And the more the world stays like this, the better opportunity we have. I'm not going to talk about global warming a joke anyway. Um, there's a kid that I uh, spent 30 minutes with. He wants to know why I give it away, anything away free because I want to take the last six years you have for not doing it. And because I have mentees go on this program. That's Black Beauty, as she's called. She's rolling up uh, health care. Got a TV show in Houston. I, and she still got it. And she was a guest panelist on that program. And they didn't take a, a picture of them standing because she's taller than all of them. She's a good looking bitch. And for women, and God forbid if you're a good looking woman, this is like brushing your teeth. And as TK said earlier today, his wife gets away with murder. She happens to be a good looking bitch, but she gets away with it. They didn't really show her because she was sitting over here. But I get great satisfaction out of this. Unfortunately, I have too few people that have this kind of stardom. But it's possible. From a housewife, unemployed, two kids, ex husband not paying her alimony, I can go on and on and on and on. Her mother's got dementia. I think both her parents got dementia. Dementia is the, the, the flavor of the day today. You don't do it because you got dementia. This is why I do it. For the people like this. And then we have mentees that give me, these are, this is a Christmas gift. How the gun got through customs, I have no idea. Now, what are they thinking? Because they got melons for heads. Why do you think I call you meatheads? And then we have a kid in the hardcore, he handcuffs himself, moron. And all they were trying to do was get the handcuffs off him before I returned from lunch. That was their goal for the day. And Duncan, one of the butlers, got him off. What can you possibly be thinking? You're not. Look at the world. 82-year-old drug leader is given the last warning after 24 convictions. How is this possible? And one of the excuses given is that the prisons are too full. And I say, oh, I've got to counter that. Bring back the death penalty. You steal in Saudi Arabia, they cut your fucking hand off the first time. You steal the second time, you're put to death. You cheat, well, the husbands don't get killed for cheating, but anyway, so it's not quite equal there. But the women get uh, cheat, they stone you to death. Oh, it's embarrassing, we all know it. Ranks is one of the most liberal, there I am, saving Scotland. Um, okay. Now, this is not much of an exaggeration who raised me, my dad. That's what my dad looked like. That's what he looked like. God rest his soul. Um, I was terrified of this. All my mother had to do was say, Danny, if we can't work this out, I've got to get your father involved. A uh, lightning bolt went up my ass, and I, could you just repeat it slowly, Mom, what you want me to do? And as I already told you, you took no credit for my success. My son is successful not because of me, but in spite of me. Most of you should have gotten beaten half to death, or to death, would have been better off growing up. And when I asked you how was your relationship with your family, you know that question? I literally cringe at your answer. I get, you know how when you flex your buttocks muscles or your rectum, you, that's the feeling I get. Oh, I had a wonderful relationship with a father and mother. That's sick. 
in the last slide before we go to the film. That's him at 90, and that's him at 24. In his late 80s and early 90s, he had no recollection of beating me. I think I mentioned last night. Somehow, it was a fog of war. I don't know what it was. He had no recollection. And I told one of you, at least, when he used to tell me, this hurts me more than it hurts you, I used to say, well, what a load of shit that is, you know? But I do remember my mother diving on me to keep my dad from beating me. That I remember, like, I brushed my teeth this morning. Okay, now, I made fun of the pig fucker. Thank you. I made fun of the